Hello, this is Randy with Excel for Freelancers and welcome to the pop-up comments guide. We're going to show you four different pop-up comments including a dynamic pop-up with dynamic content. We're going to show you a formatted comment. We're going to show you a comment with pictures and a never seen before, at least I haven't seen before, a comment with a dynamic graph for each one. It's going to be an amazing training. Let's get started. All right, thanks so much for joining us. Comments and pop-up comments are a great way to show detailed information in a small area. In fact, we have barely touched the service on pop-up comments in the videos before. We've done one with a picture, but I wanted to create a comprehensive guide to show you just how amazing pop-up comments can be when used within themselves. Now, basically, the ability to insert a comment is simply inserted and you have a basic comment here. We're going to go beyond that. In fact, we're going to have dynamic content, and that means content based on something that we have selected in each of those comments. For the first one, we're going to be providing a comment. And this particular comment is a basic shape comment, but it's going to include dynamic content. In this case, it's going to include our customer name, a type, information, so that we can put dynamic content based on our selection inside of the comment. Next up, we're going to show you how to create a formatted comment. And this way, the comment also includes dynamic content based on the selection, except the format is completely different. And we're going to show you how to do that through VBA. Also, I'm going to show you how to create a picture and put that picture in a comment very easily. And that's based on a selection of a picture file. And then lastly, what we're going to top it off with is an amazing comment that's based on a chart, a dynamic chart. And that means as we select different customers, that chart changes and the data within it it changes so it's going to be a really great training uh, something that we haven't covered before and something that I hope to see you use in many different comments so let's get started and show you just how we did that now to understand the basic comment when we select of course uh, any cell we can right click and create a comment and type in whatever we want now we know that and most of you are familiar with that but we're going to take it beyond that so you understand how to create that basic comment but the idea is that we want to create dynamic data based on what the user user has selection. Now I've created some additional VBA and so basically this selection is going to highlight the selected line. We use conditional formatting for that so when I highlight the any cells and I go into the home and conditional formatting we're going to see that that row color is different based on B4. And what is B4? B4 is where we have VBA tell us what row is selected. So as soon as we select a different row, we're going to see B4 change. So that is how. That is nothing new here. We've done that in many, many, many videos. So we're just going to, we went over that real quickly. And now basically what I want to do is the selected cell. I want to, every time we select a cell, we want something to happen. In this training, we're going to focus on selection change. And what is selection change? So Selection change meaning as soon as the user selects something, we want something to happen. When we select a column D item, we want the picture to show up, assuming, of course, that there is a picture. If we want to add a picture, all we need to do is select a line, click to add a picture, and we can easily add a picture. And then when we select that particular person, that picture is going to show up. So that's what I want to happen. So that's a lot. Of, so that's the picture. And we're going to go over one by one. We're going to go over four different modules. But let's familiarize ourselves a little bit with the back end and the selection change. So what we want to do is we want to go into the Developers tab so things get started here. And how do we do that? Well, of course, if you don't have the Developers tab to get into VBA, Visual Basic Editor, Alt F11 is there. Of course, if you want to display the Developers tab and you don't have that available, you can go into the Options and you can go into the Customize ribbon and make sure Developers tab. So this is a great way. We're going to go into the VBA, but before we do, I want to make sure that you are always getting these brand new training videos each and every Tuesday. So if you have not subscribed yet, please do so now. Select on the Subscribe click on the notification bell there that will make sure that each and every Tuesday you get notified when I create these brand new unique and comprehensive training videos we don't do small quick little videos we do long detailed unique and very powerful videos that you can use today to get freelance jobs or to create your own applications in fact to create your own applications I'm going to be starting a brand new mentorship program starting very soon I have 
almost finish everything. I know you've been waiting a long time for that. So I appreciate your patience. I have that started. If you'd like to get a head start, of course, on working on these, I do have now over, well over, in fact, I think it's 120 workbooks, all for just $37. So make sure you go ahead and pick that up if you want to get. Of course, you can download each and every one of these videos for free, but it would take you quite a while to do that. So if you want to get 120 real quick, you can. If you want to just get this workbook for free, go ahead and take a look at the links down in the description description either with your Facebook or email we'll make sure to get you this workbook for free all right thanks so much let's continue on with the training into the developers mode uh, visual basic we're gonna go and we're gonna focus on just the customer sheet oh I forgot to mention we have just two sheets so I'll mention it real quick I've got a list of customers and a list of invoices that's what we're gonna base our data on so that's pretty much it it's just really basic so the data here is very simple so back into the VBA, we want the first thing we're going to be focused on is selection chain. So all of the work that we're doing is based on selection chains. There's no work based on just the change itself, not no, no particular value change. So it's relatively simple. And the first thing I want to do is, of course, I, if the user makes a selection anywhere in the table, that's starting at D4, which is the first row of data, of course, on our customer sheet, the first row of data, D4, the last column is M, the last row is 220. So I didn't make that dynamic, I just made that fixed. You can make that dynamic if you want. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna clear all the comments. We don't want, I don't wanna have multiple cells with multiple comments. You may want it if you do wanna see lots of comments without recreating those, but since our comments are dynamic, the content of the comments is dynamic, I really wanna clear all the contents. So what that is, is as soon as I select something, there's a comment here, but as soon as I select something else, that comment is gonna be gone. As soon as I select here, there's a comment. As soon as I select anything else inside the table, that comment's gonna be on. So basically, I'm clearing all the existing comments within that table. So any comment between D4 and M22, we're gonna clear it out. That keeps just one comment at a minute, at a maximum of one comment to be existing. So that kind of keeps things. And also, of course, I wanna make sure that B4 goes to the target row. We're gonna to need to know what row we've selected for various reasons. I need to pull the data from that row and I need to do conditional formatting. So you saw B4 where the row changed, so that's pretty much it. And then what I wanna do is I wanna show that picture icon. What is that? Showing the picture icon is this little picture icon right here. So this is a dynamic uh, picture icon. So this allows us to create a button based on the selected row so that we can insert a picture. So if I wanna insert a picture in this row, I'm gonna place this button. And if we see this specific button, it's basically a shape with ha added picture. So if we zoom in, you'll see it's just three parts. It's a plus here. It's a picture shape here here let's get that back it's a picture shape here and then it's a button so it's just been grouped and that name of that group is called add picture button add picture button and what i want to do is i want to display this particular icon or button on column n and the selected row column n. so how do we do that well the first thing is when the user makes a selection i want to display it and then i'm going to run a macro and then I'm gonna assign a macro. So we're gonna do two things. The first thing we're gonna do is run a macro to position it and make it visible. If we select outside it, it's gonna hide. If we select inside the table, it's gonna show. How do we do that? Well, inside, I'm gonna run this macro right here. This macro is gonna make a display and we're gonna go over that in just a minute. But if they select outside, else, outside this table, outside this table else, then we're gonna take that button, add pick button, and hide it using this line of code. Shapes, add pick button, visible equals false. So all this line does is it, we're gonna clear the comments, we're gonna set the row that the user has selected, we're gonna run a macro that displays it, and then, and then if they have not selected, we're gonna hide it. So let's take a look at this macro right here just so we can see. This is something we have gone over before, so we'll go over, I'm gonna go over real quick because it's not really the focus of this. So show, so we have here a show picture icon. All we're gonna do is take this shape here from she one. We're gonna display it on the left of active cell row. I can also use B4, which is, has the row. So I can, so I'm just using active cell row. I'm placing it to the left 
on n and I'm placing it to the top of n. And then I'm gonna make sure it's visible. So those three lines of code do just that. It displays that button as a dynamic location based on the selection. And this gives us the ability to quickly assign a picture. So when we right click, and actually let me select a specific, remember when we select a right click, when we right click a group here, we're not gonna be able to see any kind of a macro. See, it doesn't show what macro because it's grouped shape. So if you want to know what macro has been assigned, make sure you drill down to one of the items inside any one of them, one of the items inside the macro, then inside the group actually, then sign the macro. And we can see now we can see the macro that's been assigned. Add picture icon. That is the macro that's been assigned. That is the macro that I just want to go through with you right now. And all that does is this macro right here, add picture icon. We're going to set the pick file as a file dialog and that's going to open up that file dialog that allows the user to select a picture. We'll give it a title, select picture, and then we'll give it some parameters of specific pictures that we want it to allow. These are filters. And then if the user doesn't make any selection, it's going to escape. If it does make a selection, it's going to put that full file name in M and whatever active cell row. So that way, when we run this macro, we want to select on it. It's going to take that full file name click on it, it's going to put that full file name right in M. That's that's this file right here, and that's going to allow us to display the picture once we have that comment. So let's go, while we're on it, let's go over the picture format. Since we're on it right now, when I select here, I want the picture to show up. So how do I get that? How do I get that picture to show up when I select anyone? Now, what if they don't have a picture? There, there's nothing that shows up here because there is no picture here. So we wanna make sure we exit out of that. So let's take a look back in the selection change because that's what we're doing. We're making a selection change in column D and see what kind of macro is using that. So when we go back into the customer sheet, which is all the actions gonna happen, we have something called add pictures, comment, and basically, if the user makes a selection anywhere from D4 through D220, then show the picture as a comment. That's a macro. That is a macro. Now, how about that macro? To get into that macro, we can right click and go to def definition. It's going to go right to the macro called show picture as comment. And the first thing I want to do is I want to dimension the selected row. That is the row that the user has selected. We need to dimension that as long as a whole number because we need to know that row. And then I also want to know the whole file name, the picture file. That is the location file name of that picture. We're focused on sheet one. So we're going to set the selected row to B4. We showed you that before. We know why that B4 has our selected row. And the next thing I want to do is I want to make sure that if M and the select row is empty, then exit out of the sub. Why is that? If M, here's column M, if M is empty, M is where our picture location is. So if that's empty, I want to make sure to exit out of that sub. So if M in the selected row, and the select row, of course, is right here from B4, if M10, in this case, is empty, exit out so that nothing happens. That way, when we select something here, nothing happens except when we have a picture. If there's no picture, nothing happens. If there's a picture, something happens. Okay, so let's continue on with the macro to see exactly what happens. Okay, moving down the picture file, we can now set this variable to the actual file path of that picture. And that is located in M in the selected row. Next thing, of course, I want to make sure that there's no comments in D. We can't add a comment or we can't refresh a comment unless we've actually cleared the comments out. So this line of code just ensures that there is no comment in D in the selected row. Next thing, I want to add a comment. So this line will just add the comment, except it doesn't do anything with that comment just yet until we have the next feature. So with the comment, all we've done is add a comment, right? So there's nothing we've done there. The next thing I want to do is I want to set this specific comment and do some things. I want to do uh, five different things with that comment. So the first thing I want to do is clear the text out. Often when we create a new comment, usually the username will be displayed. So in this case, I don't really want that. I don't want any text. I want to show a picture. So clearing the comment out or just putting a space here will make sure that the text is there's nothing there. Next up, I want to fill that shape. The shape is the comment, right? I want to fill it with something, right? If, if we, it's like this. Basically, all we're doing is something like this. Let's pull up where there's actually no right click. So if we're going to do this, insert a comment. So here's our comment. So the, the next line of code is we're going to clear the text out. Next up, we're going to format that comment. And then we're going to go to colors and lines. This is what VBA is doing. We're going to go to fill effects. 
Then we're going to go to picture and then we're going to select a picture. And where is that picture? Well, that let's say where that picture is here, whatever it is. Then we're going to fill it with that picture. So that's exactly what VBA is doing. And then the last two steps, we're going to resize it accordingly. So that's exactly what we're doing, but we're doing it in VBA and we're doing it automatically. So that gives you an idea of how you would do it manually, but we're going to do it with VBA. So that all of that happens as soon as we select a specific person or customer with a picture. Okay, so continuing on, just as we said, we're going to insert that user picture. That picture, we're going to fill it with a user picture, and it's going to be based on that entire file name that we've defined in the variable here. The next thing up, I just want to set the scale height as 2 and the 1. So this is going to scale it from the top left uh, 2 to 1. So the height is going to be 2 the width is going to be one so that gives us a scale and then the last thing is i want to make sure it's visible which show we can hide or show comments but in this case i want to make sure it's visible so that is all that we need to do to show the picture it's actually relatively simple and that's going to show us a picture as long as we have a picture or file name so that is great that's our first pop-up comment but now how do i create a comment with dynamic content dynamic content meaning in this particular selected we have taken the comment and we've added text but we've added the customer information of course you can add any information but i've decided to add the customer name the type the phone number in fact we could probably format that phone number so let's take a look at how we would we'll do that after i'm going to format that with you next up i'm going to do put the email in and then the address and then we formatted the address accordingly so all of this i want to do in vba and it's all based on the selected row so let's go ahead and show you how we do that back into the developers and we will go ahead and look in the code and this time we have dynamic content i've created a macro called dynamic content now how does this macro fire well this macro fire says add standard comment with dynamic content and all this does is when the user makes a selection to any cell between e4 and e20 then we're going to run a macro called create dynamic content actually create dynamic comment correct and inside that dynamic content we have the macro and again we're going to define the selected rows long because i need to know what row the user has selected and i also want to define the comment text because that's going to be a variable comment so we want to make sure that's as a string with sheet one, we're gonna define the selected row as B4, just as we did before. And now that we have this selected row, now that I know that row five, we've selected row five in this case, I know that, that the customer name is in D5. I know that the type is in E5. And so all we need to do is pull that information from the selected row. So we can do all that. So the comment text is equal to D and the selected row. This is our customer name. Then I want to go to a brand new line. So I'm going to use VBCRLF. That's going to drop it down the next line. Next, I'm going to add the default text of type with a space. And then I'm going to put the type in, which is located in column E. Then again, another carriage enter or return goes to the lower line below. And then we're going to enter the phone number. And we, we talked about wanting to format this. So I'm going to format that in just a moment. Then email. So I'm going to email, put the email in, and then a new line, then address. And then we're going to put in the full address, then a new line. Then we're going to add a space because I want to make sure that it's spaced properly. Then I'm going to put the full address, which is located in column I, then a comma. Then in the next line, then the same line, the same line actually, there's no VBCR, so it's the same line. We're going to put the city and the state. So I believe that's it. So we have all of that in here. And so that's how we get on the zip code, of course. So we've got the address, we've got the full address, we've got the city, we've got the state, and we have the zip code. And let's format that phone number too as well. I wanna match the format. So let's take a look at the format that we have here. We have as a special, currently the phone number. So when we take a look at the format, we will see in the custom that it's been assigned this particular format. It's quite a, quite a format here. So we can probably just use this particular format here that's enough for us for our purposes and our data you can put in any format you want back into the VBA and here is our phone number here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add you can add two ways you can do format and then we can format it here comma and then we need to put quotation marks then we're going to paste in that format and then end up that's going to work too let's take a look at that and see how that performs let's go ahead and click on the information here 
and we'll take a look and now the phone is properly formatted that's one way so now we have the phone formatted let's take a look at the other option which is the format doesn't work in every single version of Excel but application worksheet function text does so APW I'm gonna that's a kind of an automated text using auto hotkey text will work just fine application worksheet function text which is the same type of formula used in the text so this will work as well so if we now we take a look here we'll see it also has the same type of format so both of them will work i've just shown you two ways now we formatted the phone number so we can format any which way we want that is how we get all of this in and then so then next up we've now that we've got all the address in there i want to clear the comments and then i want to add a comment so e we're going to clear any comments just as we did with the picture then we're going to add a comment and then what i want to do is i want to take this comment and i'm going to enter the text and what is the text is that text that text string that we just created called comment text i'm going to enter that and then i'm going to size it accordingly if you have more text all you need to do is change the width and change the height and then you have your dynamic comment pop-up just like that that's how we get it right there all right moving on let's see so now we've covered the dynamic content now but i want to take this comment and i want to make it look really nice i want to add that blue background i'm going to take the same information the same address all the same data in fact i'll go ahead and format this phone number as well so i want to take all of that but i want to put it in a really nice blue background i want to put white font and maybe i want to make the font a little bigger let's see maybe we may even want to, let's see we try to add the font a little bit bigger we can do that so how do we do that okay back into the vba and let's take a look again back into the customer sheets now we have dynamic content and formatted comment formatted comment with dynamic content if the user makes a selection between g4 and g220 then run this macro create formatted content right click click the definition sorry that was off the screen right click definition now we have in a module called formatted dynamic content now we're gonna this macro grows a little bit because we're going to add more we're gonna add all this actually takes care of the formatting of that comment let's go ahead and format that phone number now again we'll do we'll do application worksheet function and I'm gonna do text and then I'm gonna format this text by using the comma here quotation marks format paste and then and parentheses okay so that's how we get it let's just make sure that's working properly we have the old format select off it select on it again we go air let's take a look at this that should be a comma not a period okay let's run it okay it's working good now so now we have the format of text here so now we have a format of phone number perfect okay that looks very good all right so how do we get this well again we're going to define the selected row in b4 just as we did before we're going to set the comment text as a string just as we did before nothing really changes in this part we just went over that we're going to clear the comments same as we did before add comments of course now we're focused on column g column g is where we're going to be adding our comments then with column g with the g and the selected row with that specific comment we're going to do a number of things we're going to add the text just like we did before the comment text so that's going to give us our text inside the comment that dynamic text i'm going to set the shape width the width of that comment to 200 and the height to 100 and i'm also going to i want to create a rounded rectangle i don't want the square rectangle i want a rounded rectangle so we're going to click the auto shape type is going to be rounded rectangle next up i'm going to set a fill color of blue this is kind of a bluish fill color using rgb this sets just the basic fill but i also want to make it more of a gradient so this diagonal up 123.23 and of course you can use macro recording to decide exactly how you can play with these numbers you can record a macro while creating a shape and you can create any type of color shape or direction you want i'm going to set the font name to tahoma maybe we can make this font a little bit bigger and let's increase this to 210 and 110 so now we've created a, we've created a larger font size we've created a color index of two that's the white 
font. Notice it has a white font. So now in bold, we could also make it bold if we wanted to. That just shows you. And then I also want to make the shape fill visible as true. And I want to make the entire comment visible as true. So all of those things. So with, with the modifications we ran, let's see if it's, it's going to be big enough. Nearly up. That's just big enough. So now we have a little bit bigger font here. We formatted the phone numbers and we could also make it bold, but I think it's fine. There's uh, everything is the, it's a little bit. The email looks like it went to this. It looks like it needs to be a little bit bigger like that. So we we'll make the width a little bit bigger. I don't think 220 maybe 220 or two let's go 230 in case somebody has a little bit bigger so so you can really play with these numbers and decide what's best for you now it fits all in okay very good so now we see how we created a formatted with a custom background type of comment now lastly let's get into the best and most exciting part something actually i have never seen which is a dynamic chart. This dynamic chart is based on the total sales. So you'll see 2018, 19, it's all based on dynamic data based on the customer. And this is a really unique and amazing training and I can't wait to show you just how we do that. Well, first thing we have to understand is there's some information here in our invoice list deals and this is where the data is coming from. So I've created a few named ranges, just two I actually believe. So when we go to the name manager, click on name manager, we have invoice customer. And all this does is a name range of all the customers in that. So I want to make sure that we know the invoice customer. So I've created a named ranges for all the customer invoices and I've created one more name range called invoice and invoice amount and that's right here in column E. So again we have two name ranges one for invoice amount and one for customer name based on the invoice detail. And that's going to be important. Next up back in to our customers what I also want to do is I want to make sure that we know the selected row of course that's B4 because that's going to help us I need to know next up I want to give us a create a chart for this so we have to create some data so let's look over here this is where our data is I want to create three different bars here based on the year so I need to have I'm gonna have a from and to date of course the first bar is going to be based on the from 1 1 2 12 31 of 2018 then we have all of 2019 and all of 2020 so all those years is going to create give us the ability to create it so this is year 2018 this is just some text that i put in this is a cell in 2020 so these are cells and i just put in the years here next up i've used a sum ifs to determine the totals based on the selected customer so that means this particular selected customer which would be Giselle Chen had total of two hundred and twenty six dollars in sales for 2018 for 2019 370 and for 2020 240 well that's great but what if we select another customer if we look back again now we see it's all changed now it's 393 because it's based on the selected customer well how did we do that well we used indirect so the first thing I want to do is I want to make a sum I want to sum something right and we're adding so we're going to use some ifs because it's going to be based on multiple conditions I want to sum based on what conditions I want to sum based on multiple conditions first of which I want to make sure that the customer is this customer the selected customer d10 it has to be that customer name this so we're going to look so basically we're going to look back on the invoices here and we only want to focus on customers which is with the same name as Lindy Moore in this case so we're going to look there only that's one condition the second condition and I want to make sure the invoice date is between two dates the invoice date should either be on or after January 1st or on or before December 31st 2018 so those three conditions customer name on or before 2018 11 and on or be on or before December 31st so those three conditions so that's how I'm gonna get the total I'm gonna use sum if so let's go over this formula sum ifs this is what this of course is our sum range and this is based on the invoices e3 through e1002 so this is invoices total invoices there so that starts again that starts here e3 here all of our invoice amounts starting here and going all the way down to the bottom e actually it actually goes to 1002 so let's i'll update that to make sure it covers all 
Let's go back in there and make sure that we covered because we have a lot. Oh, it's correct. 1002. Okay, good. So it's going to be that's what we're going to sum up. And now what is our first criteria range, which is in C? What is in C? Let's take a let's get out of that and look in C. C is our customer names here. C. So it's going to be based on our customer names there we can use named range as well there but i wanted to make sure you see exactly which one and then what is our criteria in other words what are we matching these are the customers but what i really want is i want to match a specific customer name so i want to use indirect which is going to be based on d right the indirect d and what row whichever is in b4 so in this case it's b5 right excuse me d5 that is the customer name so when we use indirect for example, indirect of D10 is what? Here, this is D10. So if we select another row, the indirect of D11. So the indirect is going to give us whatever value is in here based on the row in B4. Row in B4 is critical because we always have to know that. So that's why we're saying indirect of D and whatever value, whatever row is in B4. So that's going to give us our first criteria. So we know that the customer name must match. So this is our first. What is the next criteria range? Well, the next criteria range is B. This is the invoice date here. Invoice date. And of course, we can also use invoice. I didn't use invoice. Actually. So invoice date B3 through B, this is the invoice date, must be greater than U2. U2 is January 1st, 2018. So greater than or equal that. And then again, one more criteria range. Again, we have the date, the invoice date, and then also must be less than or equal to U3. That gives us our total. U3, of course, is December 31st, 2018. So all of those criteria is going to get us this total because we're summing if based on those three conditions. And we did the same exact formula, except it's based on the, in the dates in V to get us this total because that's 2019 and then of course our last one which is 2020 so we use some ifs in the multiply criteria to get us these total this total here so now we have our totals now we have our year now i want to build a graph based on that and i also want a custom header in that graph so how do we do that so if we right click we click select data we can see that we have if we and you can see our series name which we're actually not using at all our series name is located here in u7 and our series values are located in u7 through w7 so that's where it's going to get the values and if we edit this we will see that our customers that our access labels are based on u6 through w6 our access so that's how we get the access labels down here and that's how we get the data in here and all i've done is taken the background and i've matched the background of this so if we right click and we format the chart area we see we've given it a solid fill of this color here now we have a gradient fill but this fill color here if we right click format cell it's a gradient fill here's the gradient fill fill effects and i've gone from a little bit darker color here down to the same color as the background of the chart so we get that really nice blended feel here so it goes from cells and of course there's no border on here there's no border right if we look at here we bring it away you see there's no border there so we have that there and i've just taken all the cells around there and i've given a border around the cells so when we right click format cells we see the surrounding cells do have a thick dark blue border that is how we get this why is all this important it's important because i need to take a picture of this because the picture which looks just like this is based on these cells how do we take a picture if you don't know let's just take a look we have a camera tool i've got it in my quick access here but if you don't have it we can go down here we can go to more commands and then you can do, go to all commands and look for the camera tool here. There you'll find it right here under the CA camera tool. Search for that and go ahead and add it to there. Then you have the camera tool. And what is the camera tool do? It allows us to take a picture of a specific cell or group of cells. All right, let's just click a camera tool and we click any particular cell. And we don't really want it on R20, but what do I want it on? I want it on starting on cells T6 through W19. Again, T6 through w19 that's really what i want so when we click this we just change this to t6 
and then through W19. And I'll use F4 and make sure that that is absolute. And then we'll hit enter. And now we'll see we have a picture that was created. Then all I did was take that picture and I gave it a name. I'm going to delete this because we have one already right here. This is the same picture and that's how I created it. And I created a, and I named it ANN sales chart for annual sales chart. Oh, and one more thing. How did I get this dynamic? If you take a look at this title, this title changes as we select a customer. So when we select another customer, now the name is when, and here it, and so the good thing about the picture tool is the picture tool updates automatically when the cells that it's linked to change. So as soon as we change those cells, the picture accordingly changes as well. Again, when we select another thing, also the title changes. How do we get that? Well, if we click on the actual name, all it is is a text box, and that text box is linked to a specific cell customer b5 that is the cell well let's take a look at that cell and see what it is special about that cell that makes us so we take a look at this cell it's based on a formula and that equals annual sales so we know where we get the title from and indirect again there's that indirect again d and b4 so in this case indirect d7 which is little so that gives us the name so that way we can have a dynamic title of that chart based on that information in fact it's not a chart title remember it's just a text box text box is within of course within that particular chart so that's how we get it right there in fact we can make this a little bit bigger now that we just edit it so we can also format that accordingly just by increasing it and we can change it let's bring this down and we can inc increase the font there a little bit and maybe give it a nice color there and make it bold so we can also change things very very easily just like that and you'll see the picture also changes which is really powerful the link picture changes exactly at the moment I change it on the graph and you can see both there remember this is the graph this is just a picture this is, but it's a picture that's linked to a, a range of cells so that the picture changes as soon as those cells change. All right, so now we see how we got all this made up, but how do we take this picture and get it into this comment right here, or this comment right here, or this comment, and notice they all change? Well, let me show you how we did that into the VBA. We go our last module macro is called chart picture in a comment chart picture in a comment this is a little bit longer of a macro but i can't wait to show you exactly how i did this and so you can use it in your dashboards in your groups or in your data tables so again selected row as long that's important we need to know the row picture file name we're going to be creating a picture we're going to be saving a picture and we're going to be using that picture to insert so that's very important and again we're going to be inserting a picture as a comment we can also define it as a comment as well so we did that in this case the selected row equals b4 of course we know that picture file name what is that we're going to create a static name that's always going to be the same i don't need to create multiple pictures i only need to create one and then i'll keep deleting it and changing it as i need it so we only need to create one specific picture and we can only and remember we can only enter, insert a picture into a comment so the first thing we need to do is take that picture that we created and create a picture and put it somewhere in our file in this case i'm putting it in my file directory right here for the pop-up comments i'm putting it right in here let's move that down right in here i'm putting it right here chart picture this is the file i'm putting in it's always going to be there it's going to get updated deleted and changed but that's where it's going to go and there's only going to be one so on air the first thing i want to do is i want to delete any specific file that if it's here already i want to delete it because we're going to create a new one each time we run the macro so we want to make sure to delete the old one so that's very important so the picture file name we've set it there on air resume next why do we need this in case it doesn't exist it would create an error so if the directory file name does not equal zero then kill the picture file name killing it means just delete it from the directory we'll create a new one each time we don't need the old one all right so the next first thing i want to do is i want to create a bitmap image of the report in this case chart we'll call it chart and copy the picture so the first thing i want to do is with the shape annual sales chart with the shapes so if we looked at this if we looked at this this is called again not this one here, this is the comment, but if we look at here, this particular picture is called annual sales chart, and it's actually a format of shape, so we're gonna be working with that. So what I wanna do that is I want to create that, and I want to copy that picture as a bitmap. It creates a 
bitmap image of that. So that's the first thing I want to do. The next thing I want to do is I want to create a temporary chart. Excel does not have a way of taking a picture and saving it. So what we have to do is we have to take that picture and put it as a background on a chart. Then we can save the chart as a picture. So that's exactly what we're going to do. With the active sheet chart objects, we're creating a brand new chart. Then what we're going to do is we're going to set the shapes, the left and the top of this shape. We're going to set this particular shape as the background. So that is going to set it. We're going to set the width and the height to whatever the width and the height of this shape is. So that's going to set automatically set the height and the width of the, that particular chart to whatever the height of the current shape is. So that's, that says the width and the shape. So we're done there and, and it positions it. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna position that background on the left. We're gonna position that background on the top. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna set the width and the height. So what is the width? It is the same width as to whatever the width of the shape is. And again, it's the same height as to whatever the height of that shape is. So now we've created a chart and we've set the width and the height exactly as whatever it is that picture we're going to give it a name i want to give that name uh called comment pick so now we have a name of that chart and we're going to activate it because we need to work with it and the only way we can work with it is if we activate it so now it's active so now we can do active chart paste that paste the actual picture into the pie chart the next thing i want to do is with this comment i want to export it to a specific remember we can't export the picture but we can export the chart which is actually the same thing exporting the chart as a picture as a picture here we're giving it a specific name we always want it on this name so it's easy to delete we're taking this chart objects here the one we just created we're exporting it as a picture jpg now we have it on file now we're ready now this chart this chart that we just created we don't need that anymore we can delete that Remember, we still have the shape. We're not deleting this, right? We're, we're creating a chart, that temporary chart, that's what we're deleting. So we're, we can delete it now. We no longer need it. We've already exported it, so we no longer need it. So now we can delete the picture. It's actually, I should call this, it's a now a picture chart. So now we're ready to clear. Now we're ready to place it. Again, we can clear the comments. Again, just like we did, I have to make sure that there's no comment in here. When we place another comment, we want to make sure that any comments that are existing in that specific cell have been cleared. So using clear comment will do just that. And so now that it's been cleared, again, we want to wrap that in on error resume next and on error go to zero because in case there wasn't any comment, it could create an error. So we always want to wrap that up. Next up, we're going to set the picture. This time we're using a set picture comment. So this allows us to add the comment. First, we have before we can work with any comment, we must add it first clear it first then add the comment and now we can work with that specific picture comment giving it text of just a blank space we're going to fill it just as we did with the previous picture but now we know the picture file name because that's based on what we set right here which is the chart pick title and remember that's the same name that we exported it right here so now we can simply add the picture based on that file name then all we have to do is do a few things we need to set the height and we need to set the width and then we need to make it visible. So we're gonna set the height to 2.95. You can play with this number, change it to whatever works for you. And of course, we're gonna set the width here. Then we're gonna make it visible. That is all that we have to do. It's actually relatively simple. It looks complicated, but it's not that complicated once you understand the moving parts and all the order in which sometimes we get hung up because we didn't delete the comment or sometimes we didn't uh, add the comment first. We can't work with a comment unless we add it. But we also want to make sure that we actually have the picture file name. So that is it. That's how we create a dynamic graph inside a comment. Personally, I've never seen this before. It may exist, but I haven't seen it. So this is the first time that I've ever seen a specific comment that includes a dynamic chart. Uh, you can get a lot more, of course, complex. I just used a very basic chart because our focus isn't to create really complex charts. It's to show you how you create a dynamic chart with dynamic content all right thank you so much i hope you have liked this training we're 45 minutes into it so a little bit quicker than normal i hope you have appreciated this and of course make sure you subscribe thanks so much for joining us and we'll see you next week